on the road for this video and uh, today we're going to take a uh, scan of my brain and convert it to uh, as near enough to a 3D hologram as I can. And that involves uh, going for a long drive to get some um, specialist thickness acrylic. So we uh, called ahead and had this guy uh, cut our things to size for us. It's a whole 2.4 meter sheet of 2 mm acrylic. Um, Cut into uh, 600 by 400 sections, it'll fit my uh, laser cutter. Alright, we found our way here finally. Alright, we have a full 2.4 by 2.4 by 1.2 meter sheet trimmed into 600 by 400 sections for me. Gotta take that home and laser cut stuff. Alright, we're back at the desk. Time to fire things up and um, get into AutoCAD and start transferring all these different layers over from my MRI. Now the technician was uh, kind enough to provide me a copy of my scans on DVD. Along with that comes the viewer and the viewer affords me the opportunity to export uh, my imagery out as JPEGs um, and I'm going to try and invert these so that I can get my laser cutter to just engrave the imaged area. Um, from there I'm going to try and make a nice rounded border with a couple of holes and stuff like that. So we'll go from there We've got about 33 layers. The scan that I've got uh, that does it in 4mm slices, I'm going to scale that to 50% and do it in 2mm representations, so half actual scale, which brings it to about 109mm, uh, 10.9cm wide, and about that thick. Should be easy enough to handle, and uh, I can't find 1mm acrylic to save my life, so that's going to be the size it has to be. Otherwise, the layers would look stretched out and oblong and not really very accurate. So let's see how we go. Now we've got everything brought over in CAD, we have all these individual layers brought over in here. We're going to take one of these first and do a test run. I normally cut 3mm acrylic, so I'm going to have to adjust my laser settings back a bit. I can probably go a bit quicker on this, I don't need really super deep engravings. Um, so we're going to just run a single piece, see how it behaves, calibrate from there I guess. Now we're into the dirty side of the shed here, we're going to fire everything up. And we've got our stack of acrylic down here amongst all the other junk that one day will get finished and out of the shed. Alright, the hardest part of this is trying to get the uh, protective layers peeled off these things. That's all we need for now. Pop this down. For the most part we don't need all of these just yet. And yes, I have a copy of the file saved. Um, we have some text there. We're going to get rid of that. We just want to do one test. I want to find out how it cuts the boundary, how it's going to look, all that sort of stuff. So we're going to plot that one. Okay, from here, we really need to get a better set of system than this, but uh, we're going to turn on a little bit of air here. We're going to go over here, shut our lid, go back, we're going to go function, recall. Yeah, we should be able to go start. Um, and it should start. What have I set it to? Okay. Alright, so uh, 
looking at this, it looks like it's cutting the whole lot in relief. That's not the desired result and it's going to take forever. Um, so I did fortunately have uh, copies of these that I'd inverted. We might see how that goes. Alright, we can see some of the image coming out of here with the dithering. But yeah, it's leaving that raised. Not quite what I'd hoped to do. So uh, I'll try it the other way around and see what happens. Um, but it does look like it's cutting the relief the correct way around this time. Um, and not actually engraving the areas around it. Okay, black t-shirt, something I have no shortage of. Here we go, so here's the scan that's cut in like that. You can see it is a little um, pixelated, but that is the resolution of the cutter. These settings work just about perfect. And it has cut fairly nicely on the edge. And what I'm hoping is that it should edge light and uh, light it up. Let's grab a torch here. Um, see, it should, in the sunlight, should light up very well. So from here, what I think I need to do is um, redo all my import process with all the inverted images instead of the standard images. So uh, that's going to take me a while. Two hours later. All right, so um, now I'm on the headset. You can probably hear me here. Hopefully you can't hear this thing too much. We have got all our, our first sheet prepped. Whole sheet peel, here we go. Oh, I have that. That'll be generating some static. Oh, whole sheet. Okay, we'll plonk this in the cutter. We'll overlap it just a little bit. There will be some excess off the edges, which is fine. Stick it down with blue tack and we'll leave the scratch guard on the bottom. All right, dude, we just went to print it and the print size is 74 meg. It may exceed the available uh, RAM on the printer. We'll see how we go. Let's check our print log here. It says spooling. Um, all right, and I had to go through, uh, I had to clear all the other jobs off. So there's probably not much more RAM left on this machine. Uh, anyway, uh, we're gonna get it started just with very minimal air. And I need to figure out how to make this camera app do autofocus. Okay, uh, moment of truth. Let's get it to start going. All right, this is going to take a while. Uh, while we're here, we might um, grab one of the workshop rags here. Where is it? Might give this just a bit of a clean off here. I've been meaning to do a laser uh, job where I actually use this headset mic and I actually clean this up. Um, but life is as life is, and I haven't had a lot of time to do this sort of stuff. Wow, this is quite messy, quite dirty. Well, it'll look like a new machine by the time we're done. There goes the compressor. Hopefully that uh, isn't too invasive with this uh, noise cancelling headset. So uh, we're going to leave that go. Um, we are about three minutes in. Two hours later. All right, let's get the ASMR peel going here. This is the outer edge I have separated. Get that off out of the way. It goes in the strap pile. What have we got here? Number one. Oh yeah, that is number one. They lay us successfully on, successively on top. So let's um, pull these up like this. This is going to be the hard part, is keeping everything in the correct order because stuff like that happens. Alright, now we're back at the desk. We can have um, some real microphones again. Now what I am going to do over here is bring my fume vent up here because acrylic for a while after you laser cut it, gas is off. Now, we have these hopefully in the correct order here. I can see my ears starting to come visible on there. So it means we're about halfway. I need to weed and um, also get rid of the plugs and the holes here. I'm going to do that with a screwdriver and knock these corners off. Hopefully peel all the paper off. And uh, we'll have something looking like our uh, end product fairly soon. Right, we're up to the last one, and the last two didn't quite cut all the way through, so it's a little bit of finishing to do. Just a little bit, just to get the sharp razor edge off them. Audio is not going to be great on this video. So that is that way up. That fits there. Okay, so we're starting to see the design I'd hoped to have. Let's see if we can get a better look at this. So we are starting to see there's a bit of a 3D shape. You can sort of see it through there. Uh, maybe if I edge light this, you can sort of see what I'm talking about. 
hopefully it's starting to look a little bit like a sort of a see-through translucent brain. Right, I just thought this might make for an interesting shot as we start to insert the screw through all the layers here. Alright, we've sort of got it working now. There is a lot of dust and debris in the middle. So I think by the time I get this done, I'm probably going to want to uh, throw all of these in a sink with a bit of detergent, wash them all, and then dry them. Two hours later. Alright, so I've just spent the last two hours fighting with my laser cutter. First, the autofocus pin didn't respond correctly, and it drove the bed into the optics. Misaligned that. So I had to fix all of that, clean it all up, and then I haven't dewatered my air compressor, so it blew a bunch of compressor oil into the optics. So I had to pull the optics out and clean them, had to recalibrate everything, refix the autofocus pin. Now it finally works. This half is done, now the last four are cutting. So I've got to sit through all of this all over again. I have an idea about how to hold things together too. I've had some coat hanger wire on the lathe. We'll see why in a bit. But I've got to clean up and stack all of these now. Right, so my apprentice has come in to have a look at where we're at. And uh, what do you reckon, apprentice? Yep. Totally looks like a brain. And the first thing that she asked was how we're going to get the bolts in. So uh, I've taken some coat hanger wire, three mil stuff, machined it in a lathe and got these little um, enamel pin keepers. I did originally plan to solder a washer on, but that didn't work so well. So the keepers it is. I'm going to put a few of these through and then make custom bolts. Okay, we've got all these layers stacked on and you can see my brain in there pretty much my head um, yes. let's go to a wider angle here okay there is some oil in these layers that I'm gonna need to wash off but it's come in pretty well let's see if we can edge like this and it's not see a, it it's not a real brain well it's an MRI of a real brain yes. but you can see the layers it's working kind of as I'd hoped it looks very three-dimensional in there one thing I'm just noticing here as I rotate this through the different view, fields of view, I can actually see different elements that are kind of interesting. That's my eyeballs in there, I believe. If I go back around this way, there's my ear. You can see in the side here, the back of my head and my brain through the back of my head there. My other ear as well, and sort of a profile of the face. I didn't get my jaw in this, but that's okay. We just wanted the brain. The next morning. All right, so it's the next morning. And uh, while I was waiting for the laser cutting last night, which took hours, I actually did a bit of cleaning up. And one of the areas I cleaned up was the lathe area here. This is a lathe that belonged to my late brother. I inherited that once he uh, passed away. So today's job is to um, basically trim this down, put another keeper on the end here. These are little keepers for enamel uh, pins um, and they work really well for a bunch of different things but I need to machine this down to fit the shaft um, and then instead of my soldered washer I'm going to do the same thing for that side but make a removable pin. Never leave the chuck key in guys, it's a, uh, you can run into big problems. Finding a camera angle that works for this can be a bit of a problem so we want to go a little bit further in from that mark. Can we get? I don't have any new cutting bits uh, kicking around. Fortunately, my late brother did actually have a couple of spares on the bits. Right, let's try again. Try and get a bit of a rounded end on there. We'll just run it backwards and forwards a little bit here. Just to try and get a good finish. Okay, let's see if we can fit a keeper on the end of this now. Okay, let's see now. Um, ah, she fits. And with a little bit of slack, which is what we wanted. All right, it might be good. All right, let's plonk all this down. Plonk this in the opposite corner here. Okay, that is slightly raised. I need to actually trim a little bit more off that. Yeah, the area in question here 
I'm going to push this out. You see how there's this little step right here? That's the bit we want to uh, allow this um, little keeper here to actually push down on top of that and provide a bit of force on the top there um, so that things don't slip around and slide around like this so much. Okay, we've got two washers on the back. Can I pick up a washer with the tweezers here? One on the front, this might be just about enough to do the job. I could, of course, put it back on the lathe, but okay, that should go in. And that can tighten up there. Okay, that looks good. And we can see it across both sides here. Okay, one of the uh, tricky bits about this is getting these grub screws into these little keepers. It can be tricky, especially when you want to show a camera. So you've got to choose a funny angle. Keep it on to this. It's freshly machined off the lathe, do it up firmly. Alright. Okay, now we want to get the right size here. We're going to make a loose estimate and cut it roughly to length. We'll grind the rest of it down. Okay, a little bit of time later. We've rounded the end off. I think we have shaved it to the right length. Should go through easily now. Uh, it sits just flush with the surface. That's what we want. So now it sits as a solid block. And let's take it to a clean space where we can demonstrate. All right, so another hour or so later with Windex, we got it all cleaned up. And I have some of the identifying information uh, covered up here. But uh, what we can do from the back, we can pull a pin here and we can slide the, each of these layers out one by one like the pages in a book. If you pull it back a bit more, you can slide more layers out as you go. <coughs> so you can see each one and there is just enough tension that if you like, you can leave one sitting up there and get a good look at it in the light. It's about as good as I'm going to get. There are some little inclusions and scratches in there, but... <sighs> I don't have the energy left, ironically, because I have MS to finish this project. But, um, yeah, we can slide each layer in one at a time, like this, and it looks good. So I'm going to park this, I'm going to present it in about a week. A couple of people want to have a look at this. This top layer here is um, not only a protector, but it's got my neurologist's name on there, and uh, a thank you note for 15 years of... Um, what did I put on here? Let's have a look. Um, in gratitude for 15 years of life-changing treatment and advice. He's been uh, looking after me since I discharged from the military in 2009. So I hope you found the whole process of assembly and cleaning my own brain and all the rest in here uh, interesting. And um, yeah, let us know what you reckon below. It's a bit of a prototype. It's been rattling around in my head for a long time. And uh, we want to get... Uh, bit of edge lighting here for a good thumbnail video so we point at it we'll do our thumbnail we'll see you all in the next video